Hello and welcome to this logistic regression tutorial in Python. In this video, I'm going to show you in a hands-on approach how to code a logistic regression in Python. And for that, we're going to solve a case study, which I named the sommelier case study. That is, we are going to figure out which characteristics correlate best with a good wine. And that is exactly what we are going to solve. And the inspiration overall is that, of course, I do enjoy drinking wine, but I don't know how to choose. I either go for like, you know, the cheap that looks good or which happens most of the cases, I go for the one that is on sale and that has like a heavy sale. But I feel that 90% of the times I'm usually falling into the trap of having a promotion which is half of the double, which puts me in the exact same place. To do this tutorial with me, we need to get a data set. So if you'd like to follow me and have the same data set, we need to go to Google. And here we just write wine quality and then Kaggle and red wine quality. And then we have to download over here on the right. And there's a zip which we can open and this one we copy paste and let's put it in the desktop. And now we can go back to Python. And the first thing that we need to do is that we need to set a new working directory. So I need to go to files and for me it is in the desktop. So I go OneDrive and then this is desktop in Portuguese. And here I would see the wine quality red dot CSV. Next, we need to import some libraries. So as a comment, import libraries. And now we're going to import pandas. We're going to import four in total. So import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot, and then as plt. And the last one is to import stats models dot API as SM. So with pandas, we're going to read the CSV file. For example, with NumPy, we're going to make some data transformations. With PyPlot, we're going to create an Instagram. And the stats models is to do the logistic regression. Now, first thing, we need to get the data set, which we'll call data set now equals and now we kick off our pandas so pd and then we use the function read underscore csv and then in quotation marks very simply wine quality iphone red dot csv and this is the only thing that we need to include so if we click and select everything and then we run f9 we can see in our variable explorer that something will appear. It is still thinking. And here it is. We have our data set. We have almost 600 observations across 12 variables. And let's have a look. So if we increase, so we have fixed acidity and we have as well volatile acidity, citric acidity, residual sugar. We have the chlorides. We have the sulfur dioxide. And next we have density and as well total sulfur dioxide, the pH, sulfates, alcohol, and the quality overall. And there are two things here. So the first one is that this quality is not binary because I think for me, I don't particularly care about this scale, but for me, it is rather something that I should do or not do. So we're going to transform this quality into binary. And then another thing is that we should have a look at the overall summary statistics of our variables. So if we do data set and very simply just have a look at the overall mean, so F9. And here we can more or less see and try to first have a focus on this quality. So average 5.6. And we'll still have a look at the Instagram to see how it is distributed. But the key idea here is, you know, first of all, have a feeling for the values. And then also relevant is that this is kind of like your average benchmark. 
So the key idea of this tutorial is that we're going to find the things that matter. So when it comes to this tutorial, the key idea here is we're going to find what are the qualities that matter most when it comes to deriving the quality of the wine. And then second, we need to have some kind of benchmark to compare when you are to select which kind of wine you should choose. Simply because imagine that total sulfur dioxide is important, right? But you need to have some kind of benchmark. So if more total sulfur dioxide brings more quality to the wine, then you want something that is above this 47 or 46. Next. So let's have a look at an histogram with our dependent variable. So Instagram of dependent variable. And this, what will enable us is to then decide how to create a binary out of the quality variable. And it is very simple. So n comma bins comma patches and then equals. And now we go to our PLT and here we do dot ist and then inside we name the variable that we want. So data set, and then in quotes, quality. And then we say that we want six bins. So bins equals six. And let's have a look. So let's just click on control I to have a look at histogram. We need to include X. So this is our data set quality. We also need to include number of bins. I went with six. Let's see how it leads us. And then all the rest is a bit of optional. So it's really more if you have some kind of proper purpose in your Instagram as well. You can also change the type of colors. But for us, let's just keep it very simple. And then you do plt dot show. And let's select everything and then run. So F9, it is in our plots. And we can see that most of the things they are between five and six. And then as well, that all observations should be between three and eight. So what I propose is that we define a good wine as something that has a quality rating above six. So seven and eight. And all the rest is not a good wine. Hence, the next step is to really transform the dependent variable. And this will be quite, quite simple. So again, we want to transform the quality variable. So this is also where we want to store it. And then we do equal. We use NumPy and then the function where to transform. And this is a very simple kind of like if else. So where, then we start with the logical condition, which is we go to our data set and then in square brackets quality. And now if this is bigger than six, then I want one. And if not, then I want a zero. And just one thing is that this should be outside the square brackets. So bigger than six, then it's one. And if not, then it's zero. Now, yes, it's absolutely correct. Let's have a look. So let's click on F9. And if we go again to our variable explorer, and to our data set. And then inside quality, we know that everything is either zero or one. So it's definitely working out fine. Next, we want to isolate the X and the Y variables. And this is really already to start the preparations for us to do the logistic regression. So isolate X and Y variables. And this is again quite simple. So y equals, and then we go to our data set and we do the function iloc that allows us to split and to isolate variables. So we start off with how many observations we want. And here inside the square brackets, we always start with the observations side. And to say that we want all of them, we include the colon. And now we do comma to say that we want to start to talk about the columns. And again, just to make sure that we are right, if we go to the data set, we see that quality is in the very last column. 
And to mention that we want the very last column in Python, we do minus one. And let's go and let's just do F9 to see how this works. We have our Y, which is full of zeros and ones, and the name is quality. So we got exactly what we wanted. Next, we want to create the X. So X equals, and then we do the same process. So data set dot I lock, and then in square brackets, again, observations, all of them with a colon. And now we want up until the last one, but we don't want the last one. And fortunately for us in Python, when you do indexing, the one on the right is usually excluded. Now to do up to, we do a colon, and now up until the last one, but with the exception of the last one, it is minus one. And let's see, we'll create something that has 11 columns. And here we go, we have our X with again, 1600 observations and 11 columns. And just make sure, let's see that quality is no longer here on the right. So we are definitely on the right path. And the last thing that we are now left to do is to actually then do the logistic regression. So as a comment, logistic regression, and this will be again, quite, quite simple. There is just one thing that we need to do first is that we need to add a constant to X. And this will be replaced when we do the logistic regression by the intercept. So it is literally nothing to worry about. It's rather something that you need to put into place in order to do a logistic regression. So we go to SM, which is our library to do the logistic regression. And they have a function called add underscore constant. And then inside we need to include the data and let's run and see what happens. So it is now with 12 variables. And if you have a look, we have this constant, which is always one, and this will be replaced by the intercept. So do not worry. And now we can finally do the logistic regression. Let's call it logistic regression. And then we do equals. And to do this, it is super simple. So first off, we always start with the library, which is SM. And then we do logit, which is our function to do a binary choice of logistic regression. And then we do in parentheses. So we start off with the endog, which is the endogenous variable or the dependent variable, which is the Y. Next, it is the exogenous exog for the dependent variables, which is the X. And next, the last thing that we need to do is dot fit. And this will do the logistic regression. So open the parentheses and then close them and let's do F9. So overall logistic regression is created, but now to really have a look at the summary of our logistic regression, we need to have a look at the summary. So logistic regression, then dot summary, and then open parentheses. And now you can do again F9 and let's increase the size to really have a look at our values. Now, the first thing that I would like to have a look would be the p values, which is this p bigger than the normal distribution. So the z values. And we can see that, you know, constant is the intercept, so it doesn't matter. But we have this fixed acidity. This one is statistically significant, and it has a positive coefficient. So we do want it to have more acidity than our average as well volatile acidity this one again positive but the coefficient is negative so the less it has the better the wine so the key idea here is we want a lot of fixed and not a lot of volatile which actually kind of makes sense in everything in life citric acidity then this is nothing so very insignificant residual sugar very significant makes sense sweet stuff is usually best chlorides again significant we want stuff with low amount of chlorides and then the free sulfur dioxide is not significant so the focus will be on the total one which is again negative but very statistically significant so focus on having a low total sulfur dioxide when it comes to density we want with low density and then the ph is not relevant when it comes to sulfur it's very significant 
and we wanted to have high amount of sulfates and of course high amounts of alcohol very significant which kind of makes sense so stuff with more alcohol is best to be actionable you need to record the averages that we saw and then as well you need to have a look at these coefficients and what you really want to do is that you check which ones are significant we put them in the list you check the direction so either positive or negative coefficients and then you try to see in each bottle of wine where they have the label there should be all of these things mentioned there and from that you do choose your wine i hope that you found this video informative as well as entertaining and that you learn how to do a logistic regression in python on udemy i also have a course that deals with econometrics logistic regression is a way to do one of the econometric techniques which is difference in differences and as well it is high focus on propensity score matching which is another econometric technique over there so if you're interested please have a look and also to the other videos on this youtube channel i'm very much looking forward to seeing you soon in another video and until then have fun